Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 31st, 2022, occurred on 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the threat from multiple tropical cyclones to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days, including the potential for two powerful hurricanes to develop. So let's go and jump into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we have a few things of interest right now. First of all, in the central tropical Atlantic, we have Invest Area 91L trying to become better organized this morning. And then we also have a new system in the subtropical Atlantic with a high probability of developing. This is now de designated as Invest Area 93L. When you take a look at this here on the graphical tropical weather outlook from this morning, we noticed that two areas of high probability, this subtropical system right here, will be kind of drifting towards the south and eventually off towards the north and west or north and east rather over the next few days. And this will be have to continue to monitor for portions maybe of the Azor Islands. And then we have Invest Area 91L down here today trying to become better organized, moving off towards the west and eventually off towards the northwest over the next few days. And this could be something to want, monitor for the island of Bermuda. And then we have a potential system developing here with a 50% chance as this moves off towards the north and west. So if you look here at Invest Area 91L this morning, we noticed that it is becoming increasingly better organized today. We actually have a more well-defined area of thunderstorms today. And this is now beginning to cluster right around about 15 degrees north or so. This is probably about 15, 16 degrees north here. And there actually is a mid-level circulation in this area. If we take a look here at the recon plane that was in there from earlier today, this is a mid-level recon uh, mission. And we notice that, again, generally we have light winds. We, we notice that there's not really any strong winds, even on the northern side of this which is generally to be expected. We don't really have a lot of significant winds. The uh, There's a bunch of different competing areas of circulation at this point. However, this graphic from Andy Hazelton suggests this very nicely here. This actually does have a well-developed mid-level circulation at this point. We can actually see here on the wind barbs. This is taken directly from the recon, and this is the radar from the recon mission here. We notice though that again, generally speaking, we have this cyclonic curvature and it can be inferred that we have a closed circulation in there in the mid-levels. And so there could be this, this mid-level circulation uh, working its way through here and this will eventually try to close off into a surface circulation. And once it does so, then it will be classifiable <clears throat> as a tropical depression. Now, the forecast here becomes a little bit uncertain for the next several days. Right now in the upper level wind department, this is the H wharf forecast, the 060 run valve for 8 a.m. this morning. We noticed that, again, we've been talking about how this tut here, this upper level low, has been shearing our storm for the last several days. We noticed that there's also this broad westerly belt across here. This isn't really favorable for much in the way of tropical cyclone formation. And because of that, we've been seeing this storm generally shear just basically sheared and it really has not been able to actually develop into much of anything. However, we notice that's starting to change a bit. We're starting to generally get a little bit more outflow production today and the moisture field is becoming a little bit better organized. We can sell that here on the H4 forecast. We notice that there's generally a band of moisture surrounding the storm environment right now. And it is at least on the western periphery that we have this very dry, stable layer. And so this is going to still battle this dry air as it moves generally towards the northwest over the next day or two. Uh, but eventually, because of this upper level wind pattern beginning to change, we notice that also the moisture field changes. And it is indicated by late tomorrow night or sometime early Friday, uh, at least on the h forecast, we have a hurricane developing here to the northeast of the uh, leeward islands at this point now the forecast continues to be a little bit more uncertain after this point generally speaking because of the fact that uh, this is going to be moving into an upper level environment where conditions are at least a little bit favorable for some additional strengthening and at least on the h4 forecast this does become a very potent hurricane well to the north of the island chain However, the steering is going to become the complicating factor. If we look at the zero Z uh, European run here, for example, we notice how that the European is much more further towards the south and west uh, than in previous runs. And in fact, you can kind of go back, we'll go back to the zero Z run from yesterday 
And we notice how, again, it is several hundred miles to the south and west at this point. And most of the European ensembles as, as well have jumped on board with this becoming closer to the Turks and Caicos and portions of the Bahamas. Now, eventually, this catches a trough and phases with the coastal low here and moves away out to sea as we deal with several other systems that could be forming in the Atlantic Basin. Uh, but this could stay around for several days, in fact. And again, I mean, this is out at hour 240. Uh, so we're talking about 10 days from now, we could still be talking about the potential for 91L to be south of Bermuda in about 10 days. And so this means that it's going to be a very slow moving event as we wait to see how things play out. And because of that, there's a lot of uncertainty because we now have other players on the board that potentially could be a factor in the overall evolution. If we could jump up here to the 200 millibar wind and we'll look here at uh, this potential system right here. This is Invest Area 93L. Now, 93L may have a contributor to this as well because, at least in theory, the outflow production of 93L may actually strengthen the subtropical ridge to a degree. And what that could do is then that could also play a deciding factor in our system. And I think that's actually part of the reason why we have this storm that just sits down here for several days and doesn't really do much. And so for as long as that's the case, we'll have to watch this. Eventually, we get a trough in here by the 8th of September, and that tries to kick it on out to sea. Uh, but this is still several days away, and because of that, we're dealing with an absurdly long time period here. We may see this actually sneak a little bit more west than what the models are currently forecasting at this particular point. So there's no threat right now to the Bahamas, no threat to Bermuda at this point, but it is certainly worth monitoring over the next several days and into about the next week or so because I think we're going to be talking about 91L for quite some time. And then we also notice that at the end of the forecast period, we have another potential system here coming off the coast of Africa. And this also goes on to become a hurricane, at least in the, the European solution here. And on the GFS, we notice that, again, it's not really much of the same there, but we'll be watching just to see how the overall evolution is. Again, the, the GFS here, for example, kicks this out by September 7th and has a much stronger system uh, than the European and turns a lot sooner. So we'll see if that's followed on some of the subsequent model runs. But again, we'll see how this all plays out. We should have another upper level reconnaissance mission leaving later today or tomorrow uh, to gather more information. So that is certainly good news there. Now, briefly focusing on Invest Area 93L, this is the subtropical system that we've been monitoring uh, really since yesterday uh, in the subtropical uh, Atlantic at this point. Right now, this is just about 40 north here. This is actually located right about 38 degrees north here. And we noticed that this is a very strong uh, frontal system that we've been dealing with for the past several days. And this has now pinched off and is trying to develop a closed low-level circulation with convection that is wrapping around here. And most of the model forecasts do indicate that this could become a rather potent storm. We'll see if we have any of the hurricane models on it. We don't. Uh, but some of the forecast models do indicate, if we go back here, do indicate that this does become a rather potent hurricane. And then we'll have to watch this for potential impacts uh, to portions of Europe as well as this tries to get kicked out within the next about uh, 10 days or so. So we're still going to be several days away from any potential impacts from 93L, but it is something that I'll monitor. And of course, we'll be monitoring Invest 91L, and I'll have another video update for you later this evening. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll catch you guys later this evening.